When I think about reverb, I think not about how it's made, but about the way it sounds and the feelings you create with reverb. Reverb is about creating a sense of space, but what we experience is this extension of time, the way that sound carries on and resonates and extends. It has this diffuse kind of sustain instead of these individual echoes. I'm Geraint, or Signalsmith. I am a DSP specialist, so I work at the intersection of maths and music and code. A lot of the music that I listen to uh, has reverb as this inherent part of the music itself, that it's not just something that's added as context for the instruments, but it provides this almost a drone or a texture that's built up. So it becomes part of the instrument, not just a layer in the music, but something that you write music for. And that's pushing things way beyond <laughs> the kind of reverb that is modelled on a space or made out of a particular real-life setup that you might encounter. You're painting a, a texture. The instrument you're playing in is an input into another instrument itself, which is, which is the reverb. So when I was thinking about writing my own reverb, I had the same drive to create the perfect reverb, which for me isn't just perfectly dense, definitely not perfectly authentic to any particular space, but also rich and dynamic and evolving in the way that it sustains sound and creates a sense of space way beyond anything that we actually encounter in the real world. <laughs> It was not based on anything acoustic, it's not based on repeating echoes, it's not based on any kind of traditional feedback loops. It's more like painting and generating the sound that you want, rather than copying and pasting and creating a system. I find spectral processing for audio very engaging. You have more freedom to create sounds from nothing. It's easier to transform and play with the sound because of the way that you've broken it up through spectral analysis and resynthesis into components and elements you can play with more individually. So when you're creating a new sound, that's a very flexible way to mold it and generate new sounds without having to deal with the whole waveform all at once. You've split it up into smaller parts that you can then move around, extend and stretch. During development of Utopia, we ended up with two controls that were kind of doing opposite things. There was the focus and that was taking away transients, focusing on just the more harmonic parts and that cleared out the spectrum to sort of leave lots of space, take up less space in the mix, but then also free us up to take that space up again with like big detuning or tails. And then the other was we had this control which was labeled atmosphere, which was deliberately bringing back some complexity. We got some very interesting sounds from pushing those in opposite directions. And I think that there's a lot of experimentation and discovery in any effect that you write but I was particularly pleased with both of those, which are now part of the spectral control that you have in the interface now. I started with music quite young. My parents got me piano lessons, but also my dad was teaching me programming from quite a, a young age. And along with that, he ended up teaching me bits of maths because I needed it for what I was programming. This was back on Windows 95 and I was using QBasic to draw things on the screen and also make little beeps on the computer. And I quite soon realized that you could make sounds with code and with maths. Those three things have always been quite tied together. Once I had the mathematical background to read papers and other material on DSP and bootstrapping my own understanding to really focus on what is my passion, which is digital signal processing and the sound of the maths of audio. I think the fundamental thing about maths is it's a very formalized system. It's a, a set of very clear rules for what you can do. And as opposed to that being limiting, for me, that means it's very 
conceptual. You can get very creative with these very well-defined building blocks and then see what you can build out of them. Algorithms for sound or anything else, for me, they always start in my head <laughs> or with me on a sofa with a notebook. And for me, they're these mathematical processes, the algorithms first, and maybe I'm writing that down as equations or maybe I'm dealing with it more as abstract concepts, but I have an idea that something this shape should work. I then write that algorithm as code and then go and listen to it. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that this end result we've created is faithful to the power and flexibility of those original prototypes in terms of what sounds you can make and how it feels to play with it. It is very satisfying as someone who knows what's happening under the hood to dial things in and these macro controls and the presets are a very powerful way to interact with those. But beyond that, this has moved far beyond my initial algorithmic prototypes. There are things in the plugin which I wouldn't have thought of on my own. One of the things about being on the boundary between the, the maths and the abstract theory and the reality of something that you hear and that becomes a tool that people can use or you know, an audio effect is that you get to be creative in this very abstract space and then turn into something that's very real and that you can play with in, in your plugin. Thank you.